Hey YouTube, how's it going? I'm Evelyn and back here again with my first ever counterside video and this one's gonna be some tips and tricks that hopefully you guys will find useful. Before we get started, if you're new to the channel and want to support my content, don't forget to hit the sub and like buttons and maybe write a comment and if you do that, I will be your friend for 5 whole seconds. Alright, for the first tip, it's going to be about movement in the story modes. If you've done story mode, you're going to come across the stage where you're going to be confused how on earth do you 3 star this stage. The first time I've noticed that is in episode 2, 1-3, and one of the requirements to 3 star is to finish the stage within two phases without retreating, and at first it might seem impossible. How on earth do you start from here and finish here in two phases when your units can only move up to two spaces horizontally? Uh, the way you do that is you actually want to swap your units because swapping units do not cost you anything. You can still move afterwards. Uh, the best way to show this is I guess with an example. For this map specifically, I'm going to put an assault unit and the assault point. Here I will be using my Glepnir. If you don't have Glepnir yet, you could use a coffin. You do get a Glepnir for free if you opt to choose a Glepnir. I, I think it's the better one among the options from the free ticket that you get. So I'm going to be using Glepnir here as for my example and I'm also going to be using a Normandy on this slot. Uh, I feel like Normandy is probably going to be carrying you a lot because this movement is so useful in a lot of stages because of the fact that he's an armored ship. So I'm going to put that here and I'm going to put a uh, I'm going to put a, a friend unit. Uh, you don't need the friend unit here but I'm just doing that for as an example. So I'm going to go ahead and start the stage. First move, I'm just going to go here, I'm going to skip the mobs because I'm showing you as an example. And if I swap my Normandy with my Glepnir, you can see that my Glepnir, who has already taken a turn, cannot move. But since my Normandy has not technically taken a turn, like I said, swapping units is free. It can move another step closer to the go. And you can do this uh, an infinite number of times with infinite number of units. Uh, you can do this over and over again, you can jump around as long as you're switching units and this is how you move around the map. So I'm going to move my, my uh, Normandy here and I'm already close to the, the, um, the end goal and this is just my first turn. So this is how you uh, get, get around the map uh, faster than you're supposed to. Alright, so now my opponents have all finished taking their turn, we are on the start of phase number 2. Um, so now my Normandy can go ahead and finish the map by going to this gold square which will accomplish the win within two phases without retreating a uh, task that I needed to do. But do note that I didn't do three or more preemptive strikes and this is one thing I want you guys to know is that you don't have to do both tasks at the same time. You can go ahead and do one, uh, finish that one, leave, come back again and do the second one. So here for example, um, assuming I haven't done this already. I would go ahead and finish the stage here. Um, it's going to give me a 2 star because I didn't get 3 preemptive strikes. And then I can go ahead and retry and try to do the 3 preemptive strikes and then that will give me a 3 star. Alright, for the next tip, it's all about PvP. I've had many people on my streams ask me whether or not they can skip PvP. Uh, the answer is technically yes, but at the same time, I really don't think you should. To get into PvP, go click the gauntlet on your uh, little square box uh, rotating thing over here in the UI. Uh, here you can see there's two kinds of PvP, but the reason why you don't want to be skipping PvP is because you want these gauntlet points. These gauntlet points give you some of the best gear in the game and also a lot of goodies that you don't want to miss. Uh, there are two kinds of PvP in the game, there's strategy battle and rank battle. In strat battle, it's uh, AI versus AI and you can get 50 uh, gauntlet points 5 times a day so that's 250. And in rank battle, uh, there's actually a timer that uh, gives you uh, some of these to a maximum of 600. So you can also get 600 a day, that's 850 every single day. And the reason why you don't want to be skipping PvP is if you look at the shop, uh, you click the shop here, go ahead and go to shop list. Here in season, this is where the PvP um, items are going to be. Uh, click in seasonal, you see that these are some of the best items in the game. I read about one of them and uh, what you want to know as well is that not all of these are usable in every single one of your units. Three of these are for counter units, three of them are for mech units, and three of them are for infantry units. So for now you probably want to be rushing on getting those counter gear. Uh, the sword is probably going to be best in slot, I already bought that one. Uh, this uh, chest piece is actually pretty good as well, giving you HP. 
and as well as the accessory piece. Aside from gear, uh, you can get a lot of goodies from the Gauntlet Point Shop, uh, but I suggest getting the gear first, um, especially the counter the counter pieces. Uh, you can get the mech and the infantry pieces as well if you got a good mech or infantry unit. But after that, um, go ahead and buy everything here and it should be res resetting within 12 days. So that's why I said don't skip on PvP. You want to be doing every single day because uh, you probably want to buy everything here. These are These are pretty nice goods. So the next one's going to be about friendship. Uh, make sure that your partner's list is full. You have 50 slots total. Um, preferably if you want to fill this with people that you know. If not, uh, people that are constantly online and you know someone that wants to use your team. The reason is that every time you or your friends uh, use each other's uh, units in combat, you get these things called partner's business cards, which you can spend in the shop to give you some RNG goodies. So as a side note, every time you go into an operation, make sure that you not only set your team in combat, but that you also add a friend. That way, both you and your friend get some goodies. The way you spend these business cards is you go to the shop, uh, go to shop list, change it to the exchange center, go all the way bottom in business cards, and you can buy these things called partners uh, thank you gifts. Like I said, the rewards are kind of small. It's also pretty RNG, but everything in small in this game really helps. Like, I'm All right, this next one is going to be about your dailies. The obvious one is going to be completing everything in your missions list. Uh, try to do all of these every single day, especially the uh, perform one dispatch mission. This gives you one free summoning ticket every single day. One of the less obvious daily missions that you should be doing is doing side stories every single day. So head into operation, go to side story, and you can farm SR and SSR characters here, but they're limited on a daily basis. So in the Orca side story, you can farm Orca three times a day, and you can also farm Eddie as well, he's an SR character. And in the John Mason side story, uh, we can see that we actually have two SSR characters that we can farm. We could farm a Jane Doe three times a day as well, and we can also farm Jane Mason three times a day. Okay, this daily uh, probably isn't as mandatory as the other one, but uh, it's going to be about refreshing the shop um, every single day. So here, go to the shop, change the shop list to Exchange Center, and in the today's deal, you can see that we could refresh the shop five times a day for 15 quarts each. That's a total of 75 every single day, which is uh, half a summon. And here you want to be looking for summon tickets. Like I said, it does get expensive. And at the beginning of the game, we are lacking in gold. We are starving gold. So you might want to skip this one if you don't care about it too much. Uh, and I'll, of course, you could also get unlucky, right? I've been unlucky a couple times where I got nothing the past two days. So this one's up to you. Uh, but apparently it's advisable to be doing this every single day. Last tip is going to be about unit management. Um, obviously for SSR and SR units, you want to keep one copy of each, but for dupes, uh, this one's up to you. Um, there is use for dupes right now and that you can use them to, uh, limit break your units. So I'm going to show you with my Shoyun, go ahead and enhance her, uh, go to limit break. So as you can see, it costs her 30 APT cores to, uh, three, go, go from three star to four star. But I could use the dupe that I have to remove that cost completely. This is currently the best use of dupes right now. But apparently in the future, they will be adding Awakening post level 100. And those materials are way more expensive than APT cores. It's still the same system in that you could use uh, dupes to remove the cost of the materials that you needed. But since those materials are more expensive, it's advisable to hold on to dupes for now. But then again, if you do this right now, you are skyrocketing your account further, faster. So you might be stronger now than you're supposed to be. Like I said, this one's up to you. Uh, for me, I am going to be saving my dupes uh, just to see if you know the awakening thing is actually really expensive. The only R unit that I want to quickly talk about is going to be Eerie. And the reason is that she's actually pretty good and the fact that she's a defender. There aren't that many good defenders in the game and she's probably one of you that works. The other one I can think of is Ryan, but I don't have Ryan. So that's why I'm just using Eerie for now. Another R unit that's apparently pretty good is going to be Cindy Looper. 
Um, but the thing is, she's a striker, and there are pretty good SR and SSR strikers in the game, so I'd say she's easily replaceable compared to Eerie, because like I said, there's not that many defenders, so that's why I think Eerie's probably the only one that is worth talking about. For normal characters, I don't really bother selling them because they don't give you the currency and they only give you like 100 gold a pop. For me, uh, I just use my end characters as implants. Uh, they're so easy to farm, they're so easy to get that I don't think this is going to matter anyways in the long run. That's going to be my 5 tips and tricks for Counterside. Hope you guys enjoy the video and find it informative. I'm having fun in the game right now that I'm definitely going to be making a lot more content for Counterside. Uh, I've got a lot of ideas in mind, so you guys should uh, come back for that. But until then, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.